Hi, I'm John Olson. Welcome to Next Stop from Majestic Mount Hood. Oregon's Mount Hood Territory is one of the most spectacular regions in the world. This lovely area is ripe with activities to explore, and that's exactly what we'll do on this episode of Next Stop. We'll mountain bike, we'll kayak, we'll snow ski, we'll golf, we'll explore a lovely farm dinner, and one of the most incredible music festivals you'll ever see. All this and more on Next Stop from Oregon's Mount Hood Territory. The fun starts now. Today is all about having fun on Mount Hood. Let's play. So Steve, I've gotten to do a lot of very cool things on Next Stop, but I have never skied in August. It's the place to be. It's really about the only place you can do it, unless you're in the Southern Hemisphere, so. It's the only place in North America you can ski, right? Right. That's so cool. Obviously, we're not alone. There's a lot of people here. And there's probably at least 15 camps up here today. Um, over there, all of the, the race camps, they're running lanes, getting better at running gates, and uh, usually most of them are competing. So you're saying pretty much anybody who's anybody in the skiing or snowboarding industry makes a trek to Timberline in the summer because this is really the only place they can train. Absolutely. So we're gonna ski this today, obviously. How is the snow different? Educate me. Okay, well, it's all been recirculated over and over again. Uh, we haven't had snow in a while. So it's very, it's very granular, uh, similar to corn snow uh, to the extreme, really. As it gets warmer and it gets deeper, you can get your edges caught up in it too. So you just have to be careful. So be it's careful. fun. Yeah. All right, let's do it. So there's one more thing I can check off my bucket list. That was awesome. Yeah, you got a couple miles of skiing in this morning. Good job. It was good. And then you can't come to Timberline and not talk about the lodge. This is like legendary. Right. It's a historic monument. And uh, I love coming up here and enjoying the pool. This is awesome. Mount Hood right behind you. Yep. This just doesn't get any better. Nope, this is where I like to end the day, given the opportunity. Well, thanks for your time today, buddy. It was my pleasure. We're off to Mount Hood Ski Bowl to continue our day on Mount Hood. So where else can you snow ski in the morning and do alpine sledding, mountain biking, and other activities in the afternoon? Mount Hood, that's where. That's right, this is the spot, Mount Hood Ski Bowl. This is awesome, man. Now, I've been here in the winter, but I've never been here in the summer. You guys have over 20 activities? Yeah, we've got over 20 attractions where you control the ride, including the Northwest only half mile dual alpine slide, which is right here behind us. So I now have a new appreciation for the Olympic <laughs> losers. <laughs> that pretty fun on that alpine slide, wasn't it? That was a blast. We got cruising, man. That was a blast. Yeah. Good times. Now mountain biking. This is uh, this is the easiest run that you guys have here. It doesn't look that easy to me. <laughs> right. This is our, our four-acre free ride park. We've got three trails. Uh, easiest, more difficult, most difficult. We're about to go down the easiest because I'm in the same boat as you. I'm not quite, you know, there yet. Let's do it. All right. Now for something new. Completely different. This is the Treetop Action Zone, a new attraction here that we just opened up two weeks ago. We have the five-story Tarzan free fall swing where you're clipped in to a rope. You just step and swing right out towards the mountain. Cool. Or you can keep going up the last zigzag balance bridge up to the uh, Tarzan six-story plunge where you're on a descender cable. You just click in, you step off, you drop straight down and then it slows you down right before you touch the ground. So if we're gonna go be like Tarzan, give me your best Tarzan impression. Oh! <laughs> Not bad, <laughs> all right. Are you ready to do this? Yep. Good to go. All Come right. On. Ready? Woo! <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are just trying to be perfect. <laughs> What'd you think of that? That was a blast. That was so much fun dropping off of that. I didn't know quite what to expect. Just 
stepping out in the space and boom. I'm not gonna lie to you, I was a little bit nervous standing <laughs> out on the platform. I was like walking out on the plank going, oh my gosh. <laughs> well, I wasn't gonna tell anybody, but I guess you just told everybody. So. <laughs> what a great day at the park. You know, Started with Timberline, then Mount Hood Ski Bowl. There's never a bad day on Mount Hood. You know, you hit a few of the good attractions here. We've got a lot more. You'll have to come back another day and do the rest of them. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Up next, we kayak to stunning Willamette Falls and enjoy some of Oregon's bountiful gifts. We're with Energy Kayaking in Oregon City, about to explore the mighty Willamette River. So welcome to Energy Kayaking. My name is Sam Drevo, and uh, we're down here on the wonderful mighty Willamette River about a mile below Willamette Falls and we're just gonna paddle up to, to the falls and in the process check out a couple of the great sites along the way. When you're sitting in the kayaks, if your knees are splayed out to the side, it's easier to separate your upper and lower body. Beautiful down here. Yeah, it's nice out, huh, John? It's gorgeous. Anybody know what kind of rocks these are here? Hard? Hard rocks? Yes, the <laughs> rocks are hard here. It's Columbia River Basalt. So this arch bridge right here is the first single span arch bridge ever made completely out of concrete uh, by an architect named Conde McCullough. Um, and there's about 150 other bridges in Oregon that were designed off of this bridge. This is like the most historically significant public works project west of the Mississippi, maritime anyway. And uh, this is the first multi-tiered lock system ever built in the world. So it was inspired by Leonardo da Vinci drawings. And when we decided we were gonna build like the Panama Canal, all the engineers came here to learn about how they did it. This is a man-made channel that goes from the top of the falls to the bottom. It's a half a mile or a mile you know, long and uh, three quarters of a mile long. This whole area over here, like I said, it was a flour mill and then it turned into a woolen mill. And um, back in the early 1900s, by, I think it was by 1915, they had, they had created and sold over $5 million worth of woolen merchandise, mostly for the federal government, for, for World War I uniforms and blankets. You can see upstream from here, that you can just start to see Willamette Falls. Um, right now, the majority of the water is running through the turbines and coming out from a different place. That's why the waterfall doesn't look like it has that much water. But that actually is the second largest waterfall by average volume in the U.S. next to Niagara. But as you can see, the majority of the water right now is coming out of those generators. Everybody has their AC kicked on right now. The, the, the power usage or the power demand is high at the current moment. We're at Dinners in the Field, a wonderful event hosted at Out in the Garden Nursery in lovely Clackamas County. I want to welcome everyone to uh, Out in the Garden Nursery. The, the idea behind those dinners started last year um, after we opened our restaurant for four years. We decided to take our food on the road a little bit. And what better place to take it on the, in the Clackamas area region where there's amazing farms, amazing winery, so we try to source as much as we can locally. We try to work as with many people uh, local as possible. I'm gonna let Carol talk about what she does here and uh, I'm gonna start cooking. Enjoy your dinner. Have a great time. When we moved in, the house, the shop, and the main barn were here and, and the trees. 
and nothing else was. So everything else my husband and I have created ourselves. These are your babies. They are. What's unique about this? The reason we did the display gardens is one, we're gardeners, we love plants, we wanted to make a beautiful place to share with everybody. Um, but it's also a great tool for selling our plants because I can show you this plant at a mature form, what it's going to look like, where it does well. What's the difference living out here? This is kind of just so peaceful. Uh, yeah, it's, well, that's the best thing. And well, I was raised on a 500 acre tree farm and here we are 11 years later with this. Now you mentioned goats. Yes, I want we to meet have the goats. goats. Okay, we'll go meet the goats. Do this they is, all have names? Yes, of course they do. This is Emma. They. Hi, Emma. This is Emma. This is Scotty. So they're going to fight over you on who gets <laughs> gets rubbing and loving. I'll take Emma. You have some amazing neighbors just we across do. the street, we Rossi do. Posse Elk Farm. Yep. My husband and I are actually official elk wranglers. We help them handle the elk if they need, or emergencies, or I was over this spring tagging calves. And she makes jewelry. She does. Unique jewelry. Yeah, she makes crappy jewelry from elk poop. <laughs> I think that's awesome. You got it goats, is. they have goats. You have petting farms here, the nursery, yep. the elk farm. Not that far out of downtown nope. Portland. Nope, we're 45 minutes from downtown Portland. It's great out here. And yep. your event tonight is just fantastic. Thank you. For a good cause. Thank you. Are you hungry? I am. Let's eat. All right. Mary, this is what it's all about. Thank you. It's a beautiful night and a very beautiful event. Locals getting together, supporting the local farmers, having a good time in a beautiful mm -hmm. setting. Talking and you mentioned how you met Chef Pascal and how this sort of synergy just kind of happened. Yes. Um, we were um, finding, learning about uh, different ways that farms stay viable in Oregon's mounted territory. And he mentioned that he had tried a farm dinner and so from there, the idea kind of blossomed. And what a great combination to be able to come and try some of the food that's grown here in the area, and also to try some of the beverages that are produced here. Well, congratulations on your success. Oh, well, thank you very much. I'm gonna go try some of the food and try some of the beverages. I, I think we should. Thanks, Mary. Yes. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. 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 Coming up on Next Stop, we explore the Oregon Trail's rich history, and we'll feature a world-class resort. We're in Oregon City at the end of the Oregon Trail Interpretive Center. Before we talk about the end of the Oregon Trail, Missy, let's talk about the beginning, which kind of is what this represents. That's right. We're, we are standing in Independence, Missouri. Um, this part of the room is all the things they would have to leave behind. Oh, I'm, and this is all the stuff they need to take with them. This, these things right here are for one person, all those increments. 75 pounds of bacon kind of stands out to me. I kind of like bacon. <laughs> bacon makes everything better, yeah. right? <laughs> you could make it if you had your bacon. So Missy, how long did it take to get from Independence to Oregon City? Six months. And the way they knew when to leave, they had to do with the grass in Independence because they wanted their oxen to have a lot to eat, good food to eat as far as possible before they had to start looking for their food. It's the end of the trail because we're the only land claim office west of the Rocky Mountains. Even San Francisco had to come up here to file their plot plan. So I love how interactive this is. You've got Lincoln Logs over there, you have tablets for people. This is really a self-guided tour. It really is. And it's really, uh, I even recommend people bring their children. And I know there's a lot of museums that have artifacts like this that don't necessarily relish six kids coming in. and um, Touching things. And touching things. But we let them touch them. We let them run, and you know, because there's lots of space. and. Um, so that they really get a good feeling about what, it, you know, they listen too. Sometimes they're more engaged than the adult. Next stop would like to thank its travel partner, Alaska Airlines, which serves over 100 destinations from Alaska to the lower 48 and from Canada to Mexico. Live a more exciting life through travel and explore more and spend less at alaskaair.com.
We're at the resort at the mountain in Welch's, Oregon, just a few minutes outside of Portland, John, but I feel like I'm a world away from the hustle and bustle. This is spectacular. Thank you. Well, it's the first golf resort in Oregon and it's the only mountain resort in all of Oregon. If you're, you're full service, you've got a really nice spa. We checked that out today. Right, it, uh, we encompass you know, uh, 284 acres. We have three golf courses, three nines. We have two restaurants, two bars, uh, 15,000 square feet of indoor meeting space. We have uh, uh, croquet, we have uh, lawn bowling, we have a wedding lawn. Uh, the Salmon River runs right by our golf course, and we have the Weeburn, which is a spawning salmon stream. I'm a family man, and I notice there's families everywhere. I'd love to bring my family back here. It's a great family destination. You have all kinds of outdoor activities. So one thing you have that I found is sort of a a special treat for us is my, my camera and I last night went out and played the 18 hole putt putt golf course. Uh, yes. That's awesome. Yeah. That was fun. We had we had wagers. Good. You want to know who won? Uh, no. Okay. Because I already know that you're going to tell me you did. I did. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. Uh, there's an international flair here too. I noticed there's like a British phone booth and you've got the wee bite over here. I've heard a lot of accents here. Uh, there's a lot of people, a lot of international travelers come here. This backdrop is just absolutely spectacular. Now yes. I haven't played golf here for several years. Many years ago I did and I remember it fondly. It was mm -hmm. a challenging course but a lot of fun. But I think today I'm here, the weather's perfect, I should play some. We need to get you out with uh, Bryce Finman who's our head golf professional and he's going to get you out on the golf course in just a few minutes. I'm in. So you're going to get ready to hit this shot here. Your five iron probably should take you right over that rock. But there is a little risk reward here and if you really wanted to get close to that green or chance to even drive the green on a par four, you're going to want this. So this, this is a great hole to start off with, a little risk reward right out of the gate. Let's do it. Okay. Oh, it sounded good. So I'm digging the course, I'm digging the resort, but I'm digging the pink putter. Leave the putter alone. <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna go into the pink putter. <laughs> I like it. It's cool. What goes in the? What makes it go in the hole? We don't care what it looks like, right? No, we don't. No. Looks so mad. That's where I'm. That's my angle. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like it. I love the course, though, man. This has been what? A, what? A, what a job you have. What a place to work. What a sense of place. The base in Mount Hood. The only course in Oregon like this. It's unique. I'm, I love being here. We've attended many festivals around the globe, but none as colorful as the one you're about to see on Next Stop. We're in Happy Valley, Oregon at the Pickathon Music Festival. I'm very happy to introduce the founder of Pickathon Music Festival. This is Zale. Zale, you founded this whole thing, man? It was a small picnic, about 90 people when we started. No way. How many years ago was that? That was 16 years ago. As we looked at this giant space, the other six venues are also musical rides in a lot of ways. One's deep in the woods out here. Another one we built as a postmodern industrial structure with a PSU architecture department called the Treeline Stage. Cool. We have Galaxy Barn over here, which is a kind of your rock and roll paradise ride. It's, it's always dark, whether it's noon or one in the morning. Everything's different, man. You have so many different feelings going on here, so many different moods, and the people, the, the people going here, everybody looks so colorful. This is one of the most colorful festivals I think I've ever been to. That's great. I mean, we have high praise. We have a lot of bands who played last year and previous years are on vacation here. So that's kind of the highest compliment for us is that they would go off a tour or take breaks from to just travel back to come to the festival to see music. So we that's been it's been really fun. We don't take it lightly. I've never been to a festival of this size especially where I see so many kids and everybody's having a good time. It's about the little things. It's about having free water and not too many people and all the things like shade and like stuff to go on for kids and seven like kind of alternate reality kind of stage spaces that are all fun to wander between. The production staff behind the scenes here at the music festival is amazing. We ran into Bobby here who, uh, you go to festivals all over the place, right? Yes, I do. Uh, I've done String Summit 
you know, all those big festivals. It's an amazing festival. I mean, I've done, I probably do 10 a year from here across the country, and by far, I'll give up anything for this festival. I think I'll be back next year. Sure. Tell us about what you got going on here. This is awesome. Uh, this is a jib that I built uh, about four years ago. Uh, I came out from New York. I worked jib, you know, here and there, and I said, you know, I want to build one. You know, with this, we're, we get the overhead shots. Uh, you know, anything that regular cameras on the floor can't get, I kind of come over the top during, you know, guys, you know, jamming out on their guitars across the crowd. So it's, I mean, how do you beat it? Festival's happening right here, and we're now hiking in the woods. That's part of that alternate reality, like, when you spend time in any of these seven venues, you'll feel like you're on a slightly different planet. You walk out to the next planet and you're like, whoa. Now I love that there's, there's new trash. Tell us about that. Um, we have these cups that we sell or you bring from last year and you drink anything out of them. Your responsibility to kind of carry this around. And then we have a food token system where you buy a token or your dishes, you give them to a vendor. When you're done eating, you take the dirty dishes to our dishwashing station, so there's nothing being thrown away, no biodegradable, like, you know, everything's being washed. We've been to a lot of festivals, but none as eclectic, entertaining, and colorful as the Pickathon Music Festival. Thank you so much for joining us on Next Stop from beautiful Mount Hood territory. This is one of the most amazing pockets in the country, and if you haven't been here, I highly suggest you check it out. Thanks also to this show's sponsors, Oregon's Mount Hood territory, the Resort at the Mountain, and Alaska Airlines. Next Stop, where will we take you next? Make good memories, everybody. Who gets, the, <laughs> gets rubbing and loving? I'll take Emma. Yeah, Emma's a doll. And oh, so Scotty went to the cameraman. And he's, you know, he's actually gives really good massages. Sometimes if you get them just right, it's better than a deep tissue massage. He's Scotty. Good. He's pretty good. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Blooper!